What's the torque uh, specs on these boats here? Milwaukee fuel, that's what they are. That's what it is. while traveling 65 to 75 miles per hour. Upon further inspection, we found this. No wonder that Weird little old fella was having problems 65 to 75 miles an hour. Come on, but we're gonna fix this caravan. Hang out and watch. <laughs> What's up guys, welcome back to 806 Driver. If you're new, hit that su subscribe. I can't ever say subscribe. Subscribe button, if you will. And if you don't want to, check us out and see what you think and make your choice up later. Um, as y'all seen from the beginning of the video, the old unit here, old load nut found out that it's got a bad caraberry. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to change our care bearing and uh, I'm going to walk you all through it. And uh, that's basically all this video is going to be is how to change our care bearing. This is a 387 Peterbilt 2002. And it's basically the same on pretty much all trucks for the most part. I've done Max, Kenworths, Peterbilts, Freightliners. They're all about the same. So right now I'm going to kind of walk you all through the process and then we're going to get her done. So... Here we go. First thing you gotta make sure you have is a good supervisor. And he's right there, so. Next thing you gotta have is a new carry bearing. This one right here, we got a genuine Meritor carry bearing. And you need a half inch 12 point socket. And I will show y'all what that's for in a second. A three quarter inch open wrench and a three quarter inch socket. Basically all the tools you need to get everything down. And then after you get the drive line down, then you'll have to have a bigger socket and they're all different sizes depending on what kind of truck you're working on um, to pull the yoke off. But we'll get to that later on down the road. So let's get under here right quick and kind of, I'll kind of give you a brief summary of what's going on. All right, this here is a carry bearing. It's held on by two bolts, nuts right here to your cross member of the frame. This is the three quarter inch socket 
and then uh, your three quarter inch wrench to use as a backup up here up top. So as you see, there's, there's quite a bit of slack in this carry bearing and I don't know if you can tell it from right here, but this carry bearing is, is leaning back toward the ass end of the truck on the bottom end here and leaning forward on the front. So that right there is a, it's damn near touching the yoke. There's no space here and look at all the free gap you got here compared to right here. So it is pretty wore out. Um, as far as this uh, yoke here, the U-joints, uh, the 12 point half inch that's what you use to take these saddles off you got two of them one on each side of the e joint what that does once you take these uh take these off right here the slip yoke on this uh drive line that goes to your first rear end it just slips back and you just set it off to the side out of your way uh, then you get that out of your way that's the first thing you want to do next thing you want to do is come up here toward the front might be kind of dark get this squeaky creeper up here uh let's see yeah, it's kind of dark let me do something all right turn the light on on the phone that may that make it a lot better but yeah this is the oak coming off the transmission see here the same way here it's got two saddles on the u-joint holding the u-joint on the yoke so you got your 12 point half inch uh bolt here and here and your saddle same thing on this side so you take those loose and just leave it there. I always like to leave it kind of be in the saddles, kind of hold it up. And I always, uh, when I was younger, I just kind of manhandled these things, but as I got an older, I put one of these jacks under here and I'll air up the jack to hold it, hold the drive line up until I get everything unsecure. Once I get everything unsecure, I'll lower it down on the jack. And you can see this is a pretty tall jack and uh, so i'm going to end up having to roll it off anyway but once it's on the jack it's just a little easier to handle one thing about the day cab that we're working on we got all this free space up here too so really and truthfully if we could get centered under our uh our hoist over here which it, our hoist is offset in this shop so you can't really do it but what's nice is if you have a hoist you can come over and just wrap a chain around it and pull up on it and uh, you can hold it Hold it that way and then when you get ready you can lower it down lower your hoist down without a jack and get it all the way on the ground no problem it's pretty easy but that's basically it once you get uh slide back here to the back once you get your uh everything off get your drive line out get it out uh there's a big nut right here on this yoke you gotta get it loose pull the yoke off of that drive line and then this is a bearing. There's a bearing inside of here. And you got to get that bearing off your spline shaft. And uh, so, and we'll get into that when we get it up on the vise. And uh, I'll show you all how I like to cut them out. So there, there's several ways to do it, but kind of have a method I like to use that usually does not involve a torch. So, uh, but let's get started. First thing we're going to do is pull our saddles off. boats two saddles one and two okay, get those out of your way we'll uh, put these out here we'll clean them up they're a little nasty put them in the first washer and clean them up all right after you get those loose uh, you can come over here Grab this drive line. It, this is a slip yoke right here, so you can spline it back. Try to get 
try not to lose your cap steering your joint. Which I just lost one. If you did, make sure you didn't lose any of your needles out of it. I just set it over to the side. Alright. Once you get uh once you got that out of your way, get your gun. Three quarter inch uh socket. And your back up. Always just take these uh, nuts and bolts right here and leave them. I'll leave them up here on top with this little bracket. That way I know where they're at. And one side down. Some hardware fell down from the other side one. Not breaking yet. Oh. Lost her bolt. Put it back up there. All right. Everything here is loose now. The jack is holding it up. Yeah. So now we go to the front. We'll go to the front and uh, undo those two uh, U joint saddles up there. All right, so we're up here at the front yoke coming off transmission. We're gonna pull these two bolts out and these two bolts out in the saddle and then uh, then we can slide the uh, we can slide the drive line backwards and uh, get ready to yank it out underneath the truck from under the truck. We hit me a half inch drive uh, ratchet or breaker bar. Break these loose. Those are a little tighter than the back ones, were you? You need a half inch what? A half inch drive breaker bar or a long, long handled uh, ratchet. You know what the ratchet that we need to put the pin back in? It's pretty long, isn't it? That one. Yeah, that one. That one worked. Break them loose. Oh, what? You got that tape right now. I don't know if it lost the screw or what. Yeah. Oh, shit. I done disconnected. I done disconnected the drive line from back there. So she wanted to turn. Hey, boss. Mm -hmm. Next that. Will you get my big gun out of my box? Okay. It's just right there. Uh, right there. Raise up the door you know the yeah. where sockets are it's laying right there <clears throat> i got your big gun but your big gun no do it no do it the job y'all see i'm laying on the floor here i don't know if y'all see i'm laying on the floor or not but laying on the floor here People always wonder why. How come you don't wear no gloves? How come you don't uh how come you don't uh ever use a creeper? I just man, that's just a creeper gets on my nerves and gloves get on my nerves. Find it. 
Oh, oh, Brutus. Let's get Brutus after. Let's see, batteries, batteries probably already. Oh, he got full charge. Y'all want, want to see what a Milwaukee does? Look at there. Look at there. Help this thing rotate. Let's rotate it back. There we go. Smarter, not harder. Yeah, these Milwaukee fuel half inch God, impacts, electric impacts are hard to beat. Proud to be a. Uh, we 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 here at uh, Ronnie's Transport and A06 Driver and Hall County Customs and whatever else you want to call it. We we'd love to have some support us and sponsors, uh, Milwaukee and Makita and Dewalt. That would be pretty cool, wouldn't it, boss? Yeah. Has yeah. has some good sponsorship like yeah. that, you know. Yeah. So uh, anybody out there know anybody? Uh, put in a good word for us. We'll definitely, we'll definitely use it. So, all right, now the tricky part. Let's get the, get the drive line out of here. All right, let's get this drive line out of here. We're loose down there. Kind of get it centered on that jack right there. We're not going to go nowhere. squeeze it in there all right guys so we got the we got her up here on the on the vice got it leveled out over here what we gotta do now is we gotta get this uh nut that holds the yoke off so uh it's an inch and five eighths socket so we got it right here and we got a big three-quarter gun right there so we'll have to fire up the compressor get it off we'll get it off right quick and we'll get back all right one of the things i forgot to mention while ago before you pull this yoke off always position your yoke and i did it but i didn't explain it position your yoke and device to where they're up and down this one's a little bit out of kilter here it look, actually to me it looks like it's about one tooth off from that one down there whoever did it last so but these should line up this yoke this top piece right here and this top piece of this yoke should line up with each other and if you look it's kind of hard to tell but that one down there is one tooth off this way looks like it might not be but and all that rust that came out see all this rust i hope that ain't a telltale sign of how hard this stuff some bitch gonna be to get off most time they will pull right off and fall off in your lap sometimes you gotta beat them sometimes you gotta hit heat them and sometimes you just gotta get a puller after them so we'll see see what kind of luck we have all right so let's see 
how our luck's gonna go. What? The <laughs> Boy, let me get the phone back out so we can get a video. But I know y'all can see that even right here on the GoPro. Look at all that damn rust right there. Well, we're lucky, boss man. Got him another beer on it, but. You look at all that rust. Even him, you know, he's been doing this a long time too. We we're both in agreement that this son of a bitch. Look at all that. Man, look like brown sugar. But we're lucky it lucky it came off that. Hell y'all seen it in the GoPro footage there. It it came right off. So anyway, we're going we gotta get this part off right here, which is all you gotta do is yank on it and that rubber. Oh, it's kind of hard to do. One hand, let me put y'all back on the GoPro. All right, now I use both hands. So you just kind of work it and it'll come right off. And all this is is a bracket and a rubber surrounding. It's pretty wore out, but even on a new one, where I said my new one at, boss? Look here on the new one, even your rubber still has play in there. But whenever you bolt it, to the housing it pushes this rubber down right here and it secures it and holds it in place this is what starts getting sloppy and gives you that play like we had and there where the bearing is here which you can see there's a bearing right here there's a race and the bearing in here but now we got to get this bearing off and the way i like to do it a lot of people will just torch it off or whatever but i don't really like to torch it first of all you got grease in there and it just it makes a mess grease goes everywhere smoking in the fire whatever i like to take a little small cutoff wheel and cut this bearing off and plus with the cutoff wheel you can line up with your grooves here and um and be able to cut that bearing and race out of there without it without it getting in a bad way so so that's what we're about to do cut that booger off all right so what we're going to do we're going to cut this outer race and uh in two spots just split it and it'll fall off and uh, you can get it out of your way and then of course your bearings will go everywhere and then uh then you got to cut the inner race off which is right here it's all rusty you can see it this thing was i don't think it used any antecedent on it did they so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna get this sucker cut off right quick uh, it's always good to keep you a bucket underneath where you're cutting on these and with some water in it and catch all your little hot parts that might fall down keep them, keep them from going all over the place and keep them from getting on something and making a fire <laughs> the way money fall We're going to have to let our air compressor get to it. We got the outer race. All 
Alright, we got the outer race off. Two sides, you got both sides over here. Clean cut, came right off. Compressor had to catch up there for a minute, so we had to let it take a break, but now we gotta get the bearings out here. You can see the bearings here? And uh, I already made one slit here. I'm gonna turn it, make another slit, and all the bearings should fall off. And then all we have left is the inner race. So, let's get her done. <laughs> Alright, so now let's take these little, uh, they're just retainers, kind of retain them bearings in place, get them all. All you got left here is this inner race, and I usually notch it out in two places. And a lot of times you only have to notch it all the way through to that spline shaft. It can get loose enough and you can get a hammer and a, and a chisel and hit it and it'll just fall off. So a lot of guys heat them, a lot of guys torch them, but you got this, you got to remember you got this spline shaft here so you don't want to booger it up. One thing nice about using a cutoff wheel like this, you can get right on here and line up with one of the grooves on that spline shaft and cut it right down to it and you, won't, you don't have to worry about boogering up any of your splines. Not that it really matters boogering them up back here because this is where you're, when you put your new bearing back on, it's gonna be right there on that flat spot anyway, but you, you just wanna be real careful with it. So, so we're gonna go ahead and get this inner race cut off. Okay, no, so I just split it in one place right here, you guys. You can see pretty well in line with my groove on the spline shaft. And I went back to here, I got the chisel out, you can see that, and I was able to knock it around and get it to, and get it to start moving. Got about a quarter inch on it right there, so I'm gonna finish tapping it on off and then we'll talk about what we're gonna do after that. Alright, so we got to race down we're to the bare uh, spline shaft now. You can see I did get into the surface right there just a little bit with the uh, cutoff wheel, but not bad. So we're going to take some emery cloth or a, a polisher and clean this surface up and a wire wheel and clean all these up and a wire wheel and clean all these threads up. So we'll have our spline shafts clean, our threads clean. And then our uh, our surface, our right, our surface that our uh, bearing uh, sets in, clean. And then once we get everything clean, we'll take some uh, anti seize right here and spray all this down real good before we put our new uh, 
new uh, uh, boss man got some too. Oh, he dropped it. But uh, <laughs> but we'll uh, we'll get her all cleaned up and lubed up, and then uh, it's pretty easy putting that new bearing back on. You just pretty much slide slide it back on here, put your yoke on, and tighten it up, and it, and it's there. And then do the reverse process of uh, putting your uh, drive line back than of what you took it off. So let's uh. Let's get her cleaned up. There you go. Kind of see our little surface deal. It's not really pitted deep though. It's just surface surface uh, scratch. And she's all cleaned up, ready to put the NICs on there, and, and let's get her put back together and get her back on the truck so we can go to the house. But that's uh, where we are. We're gonna lube it up, put the new uh, put the new uh, bearing on, and put our put our yoke back on i gotta finish cleaning the yoke too put our yoke back on and then secure everything up I messed up, didn't I? This goes first. Alrighty, see if we can find something to drive it on there a little bit. Right, this piece of pop I found goes right up onto that race, perfect in there, so we can we can tap this thing on the end. bottomed out good to keep scrap metal around ain't it boss yes sir never know when you're gonna need a driver all right we got our yoke cleaned up here now it's this turn to go on remember we got to keep splined up and uh keep squared up with our one on the other end down there It's a one tooth off that way. Hell, one tooth each way makes it just a little bit off either way. So we'll flip it over 180 degrees here. It's gonna do the same exact thing. Be a be a tooth also we'll just put it back just like it was that's how they had it and they must have had it that way for a reason all right so we got our yoke on we've got a bearing on get our washer here put it back on get her nut and a lot of times you really want to get you a new nut but most of the time we don't do it sometimes you don't put a loctite on there or whatever but if you got big guns got some balls hammer away so i'm going to start the compressor back up that way we can use the big gun tighten the shit out of that thing we'll be right back at it We 
we've got our uh, eight bolts and our four saddles from the U joints here. Told y'all we're gonna clean them up. We're just gonna I'm gonna clean them real good. Just get a lot of the dirt and stuff off of them here in the parts cleaner. Should have had them soaking, and I forgot to I forgot to do it. But I'm just mainly just gonna rinse them off. See, so get a lot of that that old debris off of them. This makes them a lot, a lot easier to deal with when you're going back with them. I had a uh, somebody comment in on one of my previous videos about you know when I was I can't remember what I was doing. It's either working on that uh, sealing up that oil leak I had, or uh, I can't remember there's something else I did too here lately i can't remember which video it was guys um but he said man i wish you would uh do a complete walk through when you're working on something instead of just uh doing the time lapse so today i figured would be a, a good a day as any to do do a full length video on actually repairing something and this is one of the easiest repairs you can you can make on us on a truck guys and uh for for those of y'all that uh actually learned something today and this is a uh, good information to you if uh go down there in the comment in the comment section and uh leave uh uh leave me three uh three thumbs ups down there and if it if you feel like it wasn't worth a damn and i ain't worth a crap at what i do or you disagree with it or whatever leave me three thumbs downs that way i kind of know I kind of know what I got going on. Just uh, hit me up. Let me know. Uh, I'm gonna try to start doing a few more of these uh, these full length repair videos like this. Uh, as far as the rat rod, I got to put. If y'all seen from the last video, we're gonna have to put two windshields in it. And I got to pull the visor off. And while I have the visor out, um, to pull the visor off, I got to pull the headliner down and all that to get to it and while i have that off we're going to dehorn the rat rod take the horns off the top and i have two more cab lights we're going to put up there so we'll have a, a roll of a, a roll of seven cab lights on top so that's going to be pretty cool when we get that done and uh i'm about i think tomorrow and i'll probably i'm gonna make a video on that too not tomorrow tomorrow saturday Sunday, I'm gonna come down here and get started on building uh, my custom uh, light bar bumper for the rear of the rat rod. So, if uh, none of y'all have ever seen it, you can go back uh, about nine months ago. I did one for the the Freightliner we got we have here. It came out pretty cool. So, and uh, when I was at BNB, we kind of we started building them like this. So, gonna be pretty pretty neat deal. All right, we're all cleaned up. So. What, what I'm going to do, see if I can position you out a little different here. What I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to get the drive line still over there in the vise. Get it positioned up under the truck. And uh, the GoPro here, the battery is about to die on it. And uh, I got actually have it plugged into the wall right now. And I'm not going to be able to, I got all my extension cords for lights and everything else in here so um i'm gonna use my phone and uh do the best i can recording uh the reinstall on the phone so uh let's get her did <laughs>
I need to air my jack up to level this up to where I can get a good, uh, good secure connection with my, uh, with my socket. Of course, I left my airline up, up yonder, so I'll be right back. Okay, we we'll got a jack in the back of it. And now I can get a good. Here. You'll walk the fuel, that's what they are. That's what they do. Alright, we got the front going into the back chain position. We gotta move back to the back. Boat up for her, uh, her two boats on the caravan and the, the two saddles on the on the rear. So we'll be done. Oh yeah, don't forget that. When you finish, the breeze, everything good too. All right, we got everything started. All I got here is tighten everything up. Got a little play, but that's just grease in the uh, in the U joint there. But as far as uh, where's the carry bearing, there ain't no play there now. Now one thing I have noticed here, and maybe it's just because the airbags are down, but still to me it looks like this uh, carry bearing is riding forward. But that's the riding forward. I'm sorry. As the suspension airs up, it might square up and level out. So I'll have to look at that when we when we air it up. One thing I got left do to do is grease this and uh I'm gonna do that on another day here before we pull it out of the shop. I'm gonna grease the whole truck, have it done, but that my friends is how we change a carrier bearing. So I hope y'all found this uh, useful, entertaining, and I'm going to get cleaned up and get the heck out of here. It's Friday. It's my father-in-law's birthday tonight, or today. I might go eat some cake, maybe drink a cerveza. Uh, so, we're 806 driver, Ronnie's Transport, Hall County Customs. Keep the shiny side up. The hammer down. Support your veterans. 
your troops, your law enforcement, first responders, your teachers, and uh, most importantly, the youth of America. And uh, we'll see y'all on the next.